Is that the mark of the beast? Nah, that's just Elon Musk implanting a chip into a volunteer's brain. In this episode, we talk Neuralink, promising products, startups, Apple Car, nano robots for cancer treatment, a miniature atomic battery, and more. I'm Nick. We'll be jumping from one thing to another next quick, so strap in and enjoy. Elon Musk's company Neuralink has implanted its chip into the first volunteer. The patient is recovering well. Quote, initial results show promising neuronal pulse detection, Musk wrote on his social media X. This also suggests that the company's implantation robot has done well as well. When the recovery period is over, we can finally find out whether the chip really allows you to control electronic devices with your mind, whether it's difficult to master, and how effective it is compared to its counterparts. Quick question, how many of you can name Neuralink substitutes? Let us know in the comments below. We are very much looking forward to the reports from Elon and hope that the first Neuralink volunteer will not remain disappointed. Contrary to established practice, regulators allowed Musk to implant the devices in several volunteers at once. This is somewhat alarming given Elon's impatience and his love of tweaking things on the fly and testing them immediately. Hopefully, in this case, he'll be extremely careful. Against the backdrop of an ever-growing number of companies and startups trying to race to create a universal robot, Bill Gates recently told us which five projects in this field he considers to be the best. Topping the billionaire's personal ranking was Agile Robotics. It has already sent its bots to Amazon for testing and is now preparing to ramp up production capacity to 10,000 robots per year. Second place went to the Tevil project. It's not a humanoid robot at all and a rather strange concept at first glance, but it seems to be very viable and is working in gardens in Italy, US, Chile, Israel, and other countries. Third place goes to Aptronic and its Apollo humanoid robot, which should be available for purchase this year. The general purpose robot can be programmed to perform a variety of tasks from working in logistics and manufacturing to helping with household chores. Remember that programming each task is a very awkward way to introduce a general purpose robot. Companies like Figure and Toyota Research Institute are now working on teaching robots by demonstration, which is much more efficient. But back to Bill's preference list. He named the University of California's Romila Robotics and Mechanisms Laboratory as his fourth promising choice. Not only humanoid robots are born and developed here, but also a variety of alternative forms of robots. It's not a startup, but that doesn't make its developments any less promising. Finally, in fifth place, Field AI is a company that creates autonomy systems for robots with any form factor, allowing them to go out and move around in any environment, ready for unpredictable conditions. Meanwhile, Google has unveiled an advanced AI for video creation called Lumiere. The new tool can create amazingly realistic videos lasting up to five seconds. The neural network animates still images or only parts of them in response to natural language text cues. Unlike its predecessors, Lumiere builds the entire length of the video at once rather than generating the first and last frames trying to guess what happens in between. The development is a research project and it's not yet known whether it will be available for public use, which is a bummer since my producers would love this one. The timing of the Apple car, which has long stirred the imagination of the company's fans and not only them, has moved again. Now it's reported that the alleged car of the future will not be released before 2028. The Titan, or T172 project, which was supposed to be the iPhone in the world of transportation, turned out to be a launch shot, complicated by numerous changes in key personnel and development. Apple abandoned the concept of a fully autonomous robot car and settled for a lower level of autonomy. Developing autos with conventional driver assistance features at about the same level as the current capabilities of Tesla models. So we can exhale a miracle will happen here except in the field of design and maybe performance. Naturally, there is another option. If developers disappoint executives again, the project will be canceled. By the way, considering that even Tesla has already lost the electric car market to the Chinese, it will be very difficult for even a company like Apple to get a good start. How do you say that in Chinese? 
Engineers at IHMC Robotics Lab, who are developing the hydraulic humanoid robot Nadia, have presented a new approach for teaching robots through teleoperation. Usually with this approach, there are limitations. Usually with this approach, there are limitations in efficiency and accuracy. The new approach, proposed by the engineers, uses mixed reality and assistive autonomy. It combines the user's movements with the robot's autonomous capabilities to improve the efficiency and accuracy of the remote control. Using probabilistic motion parameters, object detection, and feature patterns, the system improves the efficiency and accuracy of the robot's movements, keeping its movements as human-like as possible. It's worth recalling that humanoid robots in general, and the Nadia robot in particular, are designed precisely so that they can perform tasks in a human environment, the way humans actually do it. Which is cool, but kind of scary at the same time. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Chinese startup Limx Dynamics, which only recently announced that they have a humanoid robot that can walk on uneven terrain on its own, has shown that it actually trains in other areas as well, such as boxing, playing drums, carrying boxes, and more. It's good that engineers honestly said that so far all of this is in the mode of teleoperation. However, all the testing serves to gather data and train control algorithms. Hey, as long as they don't get it to train with Habib Nurmagomedov, we're cool. It seems that the developers of the Mali Robot Kitchen are not yet desperate to bring their idea to the mind and the consumer. Moreover, from incredible concepts and super expensive solutions that require a complete reorganization of the kitchen area, they have moved to more traditional solutions. But it's not so easy to make them universal and adapt them for the consumer sector, or at least for cafes and restaurants. Ideally, this is how the company sees its final product, a robot that not only cooks complete meals, but also tells you when ingredients need to be purchased, suggests dishes based on the products you have, learns what you like, and even cleans up after itself. What do you think? I'll tell you what I think. There isn't a robot on this planet that can cook steel-cut oats with crunchy peanut butter, a sprinkle of cinnamon, and a drizzle of strawberry jam like I do. At least, for now. Amazon said that its new Sequoia and Digit robots will help further increase the speed of delivery of goods to customers. The company representatives emphasize that these solutions improve safety in the workplace. Basically, all ointment and no flies. Except, of course, potential unemployment for people. But hey. The company employs 750,000 robots, including industrial robots Sparrow and Cardinal and autonomous mobile robot Proteus, and now also humanoid robots from Agility Robotics. But the main novelty of the company is the Sequoia robots. It's an automated system that allows to identify and distribute goods in the company's warehouses for storage, doing it 75% faster than its counterparts. In general, the number of robots in Amazon's warehouses is growing every year, and their types are becoming more and more diverse. Who would have thought that robots need diversity? Researchers from Barcelona have developed nanorobots. A single injection of them little crawlers reduces bladder cancer in mice by 90%. The tiny nanomachines consist of porous sphere, silica, and run on cardamide. Another important component is radioactive iodine, a radioisotope commonly used to treat tumors locally. The nanorobots travel along the bladder walls and accumulate in tumors, ensuring efficient drug delivery. In doing so, a single dose of nanorobots has been shown to be more effective than conventional treatment. Bladder cancer is running high worldwide and requires constant monitoring and repeated treatment, making it one of the most expensive types of cancer. Researchers believe that the new method will reduce the cost of treatment, but additional testing for possible recurrence of the disease is required. Humans walk dogs, but who should the robot walk? You can walk dogs, of course, but you can walk another robot. Such a strange and funny picture was presented in a new video by engineers from Westwood Robotics. Now they're testing the abilities of their robot Timus for different tasks, but there are no details about its autonomy and technical characteristics as of yet. But it's still interesting to watch the next humanoid robot. As for the little guy on a leash, it's just like the Bruce Dynamic General Purpose robot, which is already available for purchase. This open platform for research and education is developed in conjunction with another robotics lab, Romila, which Bill Gates, you guys remember, invested in. DJI has unveiled the first delivery drone, which can carry cargo either in a flight case or by suspending it from a winch. The choice of transportation method depends on the landing site and more specifically on whether the drone can land there or whether it has to winch the cargo down. 
The drone is equipped with eight propellers distributed among four arms, two units per arm. It's reported that in the standard configuration with two batteries, the drone is capable of carrying a payload weighing 66 pounds or 30 kilos to a distance of up to 10 miles or 16 kilometers at a speed of 44 miles or 72 kilometers per hour. If you lighten the device with one of the batteries, its payload will increase to 88 pounds or 40 kilos, but the range will drop by half. Flycart 30, as it's called, can fly in moderate rain and operate in temperatures between negative 4 and 113 Fahrenheit or negative 20 and 45 degrees Celsius. What's the best use for this drone? Drop your suggestions in the comments. A platoon of scary robots has just arrived. Meet Philobot, a robot that is sure to get you as it can print its own body on a 3D printer until it reaches its target. According to the developers from the Institute of Italian Technology, the robot is designed to explore other planets. It's capable of growing upwards in the direction of the light source, but it can be customized in other ways as well. The device itself has a conical head at the top, a power source base station at the bottom, and a stalk-like body in between. As it grows, the Philobot pulls a filament of thermoplastic from a spool at the base station into its head. It then passes through a heated extruder in the head, which slowly rotates relative to the body. In this way, the robot prints itself. At the same time, depending on light sensors, a gyroscope, and other electronics built into the head, the temperature orientation and speed of plastic deposition are constantly changing. What's more, the robot automatically wraps around vertical supports if there are any nearby, allowing it to spend less time and energy reaching its goal. If there's nothing to hang on, the robot will make its body stiff and strong to support itself. Has this already been made into a movie somewhere? I feel like it should. More on 3D printing, researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have developed a liquid metal 3D printing method that can create large structures in minutes. The liquid metal printing process was developed by a team from MIT with funding from several companies, including a furniture company. Molten metal is extruded along a predetermined path through a ceramic nozzle onto a printing platform of 100 plus micron glass beads, where it solidifies to form a three-dimensional structure without the need for support. The method is 10 times faster than existing methods, although it has the disadvantage of low resolution. So far, the method is only suitable where high precision is not crucial, plus the printed materials can withstand post-processing such as milling. The team plans to further refine the process to improve flow control and a more stable nozzle temperature to avoid clogging. Meanwhile, China has created a Betavolt nuclear power battery that can operate for 50 years without recharging or maintenance. The development comes from Beijing-based Betavolt New Energy Technology Company, which has instantly become one of China's leading nuclear technology companies. The new nuclear battery utilizes nickel-63 nuclear isotope decay technology and a diamond semiconductor. The device is not just miniaturized and relatively inexpensive, but also has a modular design. And indeed, it's designed for 50 years of autonomous operation. In addition, the developers claim that the battery is safe, including for the environment. Altogether, this allows it to be used in civilian projects. The company says that the Beta Vault will soon be put into mass production. Is it me, or do you too get this vague feeling that China is ahead of the planet again? By the way, are you getting ready for summer season already? Well, engineers at the DFKI Robotics Innovation Center are. They've recently presented the Shiva Strawberry Picking Robot. It's a semi-autonomous mobile system capable of picking berries independently of humans. Its difference from its competitors is that Shiva is designed to work in an open field as opposed to a greenhouse. The robot detects strawberries with the help of a multi-spectral camera and AI-based algorithms classify them according to their maturity level and are also responsible for moving the machine across the field. By the way, the sponsors of the development is the German Federal Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Seems like they're not really happy with the workers right now. Sad news has reached us from Mars, ladies and gentlemen. The first planetary helicopter ingenuity, which heroically made 72 flights in three years instead of the planned five, damaged a blade and went out of service. In more than 1,000 Martian days, the little robotic vehicle flew over many different terrains, helping to find promising areas to explore for the Perseverance rover and mastered landing at 48 airfields. According to NASA, Ingenuity's end date is January 18, 2024. During this flight, it climbed to a height of 40 feet or 12 meters, but then communication with it was lost and it landed unsuccessfully. NASA engineers still hope to learn the details of the accident by studying images from the rover, but it probably won't do much good. 
Meanwhile, this is one robot we cannot get enough of. In the UK, a bot for autonomous repair of asphalt pavement is about to be released on the roads. Eris has been developed by Highways England in collaboration with the University of Hertfordshire. The robot is equipped with an artificial intelligence system and video cameras that allow it to scan the road surface and detect cracks, protrusions, and other defects. The bot then uses special tools to seal them. Eris can operate around the clock and does not require human involvement in the repair process whatsoever. This can reduce the cost of road maintenance work by up to 90% and speed up road maintenance work by up to 70%. In addition, this method of road maintenance can significantly reduce traffic jams and improve safety. The first trials of the robot will take place on a street in, surprise, surprise, Hertfordshire over the next few months. If the results are positive, similar robots can be put into operation on other roads in the UK. And by the way, according to statistics, the country has to fix 2 million potholes every year. Japanese scientists from the University of Tokyo have created a bipedal robot whose actuator consists of artificially grown but living muscle tissue. Such an actuator can be more efficient and can also easily copy the way humans move. So far, the robot with living muscles moves in a special nutrient-rich environment driven by electrodes manually brought to one or the other leg. But in the future, scientists plan to develop devices for supplying power to the muscles to work in the air and effective mechanisms for controlling movement. I can sit here all day, but we're out of time, folks. Want more content about robots and AI? Join our community on Telegram then. Subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and stay tuned for more news from the world of high tech.